Society for Threatening People. The floor is yours. Guten Tag. Dobar dan. Dear Chair of the Congress, dear honored guests, dear friends, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for your kind invitation to give this address of welcome to the World Roma Congress. The organization I represent, Society for Threatened Peoples, STP, has been working closely with the Roma and Sinti community in Germany and beyond for almost 60, 60 years now. In welcoming you to the Congress, I should like to say a little bit about this history of collective effort and identify some important issues that I believe are relevant to your ongoing work. Our association began in the 1970s, three decades after the end of World War II and the downfall of the genocidal regime that was responsible for the murder of 500,000 European Roma. Under citizenship legislation that dated back to the National Socialists, the Sinti and Roma in Germany were experiencing discrimination and harassment at the hands of officials and policy officers who had themselves been involved in the Nazi era persecution of the Sinti and Roma community. STP's recently deceased joint founder, Tilman Zürich, understood that while it was important to speak out on behalf of a group whose voice had been ignored by their fellow citizens, it was equally important to work with and alongside them in support of their own efforts to reassert their rights. In 1979, STP joined forces with Verband Deutscher Sinti and the World Romani Union to organize a memorial march and rally at the former Bergen-Belsen concentration camps with the aim of securing official recognition for the Sinti and Roma as victims of the National Socialists. The presence alongside Romani Rosa of notable STP supporters, such as the former president of the Central Council of Jews, Heinz Galinsky, and the speaker of the European Parliament, Simone Weil, herself a survivor of Bergen-Belsen, helped end years of public silence over the atrocities perpetrated against the group by the Third Reich and ongoing discrimination practiced by German Federal Republic authorities. In 1981, working with Gretchen Paxson, General Secretary of the World Roma Congress, STP and Verband Deutscher Sinti helped organize the headline-making Third World Roma Congress in Göttingen. Delegates representing Sinti, Roma, Ashkali, Manush, Gypsies, Yaleri, Karderash, Lovari, Gitanos, Tinkers, Yenish, and other groups from 25 countries and three continents came together in open session to discuss and exchange information about the different challenges faced by the diverse minority communities, often referred to indiscriminately as gypsies. These and other initiatives helped raise awareness in Germany of the historic crimes and injustice perpetrated against the group. In March 1982, the recently established Central Council of the Sinti and Roma secured official recognition of the group's status as victims of the National Socialist regime, along with their entitlement to compensation. The federal government was persuaded to acknowledge its historical and political responsibility. After meeting with the Central Council, Chancellor Helmut Schmidt announced that, this, that his government recognized the crimes committed by the National Socialists against the Sinti and Roma as genocide. In 2012, the memorial to the Sinti and Roma of Europe murdered by the Nazis was unveiled. More recent collaborative achievements include the establishment of the Documentation Center for Combating Anti-Gypsyism and the Independent Commission for Combating Discrimination Against Sinti and Roma, 
and the appointment of the federal government's anti-discrimination commissioner, Dr. Mehmed Daimaguler. As citizens of this country now recognized as one of German's four national minorities, the Roma and Sinti have succeeded in changing deeply entrenched social and cultural attitudes and institutional practice. That doesn't mean that the struggle is over. The way Germans have acknowledged and tried to come to terms with their nationalist past and its record of racial hatred and genocide is widely admired, but it is a process that has taken decades and even now is far from complete. The effects of prejudice and discrimination continue to affect the lives of Roma groups across Europe and beyond. Our work with other less well-organized Roma communities is increasingly influenced by the impact of conflict in countries where they are particularly vulnerable in time of war. The experience of conflict in Europe and elsewhere has highlighted the need to take the specific circumstances of the Roma into account during wartime itself and also in post-war planning for recovery and reconstruction. Systematic attention needs to be paid to their involvement as equals without ignoring their particular vulnerability to discrimination and marginalization. Ill-informed immigration authorities have sought to deport Roma war refugees back to Kosovo and elsewhere in the Western Balkans without regard for their situation as long-term residents in the host country or for security considerations in their country of origin. Our office in Göttingen, I was in the office in Göttingen with Mr. Tilman Zülch and I was in the office in Göttingen with Mr. Jemail Emini. It is the father of, of Herr Kenan Emini. I must mention uh, this fact. Our office in Göttingen has had to become a go-to source of advice and support for Roma refugees from southeastern Europe in their dealings with the German authorities and courts. We are mindful of the fact that Roma victims of war, persecution and genocide in Bosnia, Croatia and Kosovo are still seeking justice. 30 years later, the international community and its courts and institutions have yet to treat them with the respect due to victims of crime and neglect. One particular example of the destructive consequences of institutional prejudice and discrimination during and after war is the failure of international institutions, including the United Nations itself, to accept responsibility for the harm inflicted on a vulnerable community of Roma, Ashkali, and Balkan Egyptian refugees whose health and life prospects were irreparably damaged by lead poisoning after they were housed by the, by the UN in refugee camps on contaminated land in Mitrovica, in Kosovo. This case is a dramatic reminder that it is not just bullets and bombs that kill and maim. Racism and prejudice can have equally deadly outcomes. Children and pregnant women were particularly exposed to risk in the camps and the number of deaths have been attributed to lead poisoning. That is what anti-gypsism can mean. That is what you and we are fighting. If anyone would like to find out more about this shameful case, I should mention that Ms. Diane Post, the family's persistent and determined lawyer, is attending the Congress on their behalf. Once again, war in Europe is turning the lives of vulnerable communities upside down. Governments must be prepared to welcome, respect, and integrate Roma refugees from Ukraine, not just while the war itself lasts, but also as they deal with its aftermath. And Ukraine itself must be prepared to provide a similar welcome home for the returnees. Here perhaps is an opportunity for Roma activists and their human rights partners to leverage change. 
It is important that national Roma organizations and partner organizations press governments to say clearly what their commitment to minorities within the context of their membership of or aspiration to join the European Union actually means and keep them to their word. I hope that discussions and meetings on your exciting agenda will provide you with plenty of opportunities to get to know one another and to enjoy, to enjoy all the positive aspects of the diverse social and cultural traditions that you bring to this Congress. May I wish you all a positive, productive, enjoyable and successful Congress. Thank you very much.